Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from graphicinmotion.com and in this tutorial I want to show you how to customize my romantic parallax slideshow After Effects template. For those of you who already purchased the template through VideoHive, uh, thank you very much for your support, I really appreciate it. And for those of you who just want to take a look at the project, I hope that you like what you are seeing and I hope that this will help you decide whether this is a template you could use or not. So let's open up the project inside After Effects and therefore I go to File and then I select Open File and I navigate to my Romantic Parallax Slideshow folder. You see that inside this folder we have two different After Effects project files. The first one is the Romantic Parallax Slideshow Short and the second one is Romantic Parallax Slideshow Long. And as the name already says, they just have different length. So the short one is exactly the same project that you already saw in the preview video. It has 18 placeholders and the long version has 26 placeholders. So whatever you need, you can choose either the short or the long version. I will use the short version for this example, so I will open it up. And then it may happen that you get this information. After Effects says that this project must be converted from version 10. And this only means that this project was created with an earlier version of After Effects. Actually, it was created with After Effects CS5. And if you use a later version of After Effects, then you get this information. It's no error, so don't be worried. Just click OK and everything should work fine. If you get another warning or error message that some files are missing, this is also no problem, then After Effects just lost track of some of the included pre-rendered files. I will quickly show you how you can relink these files. So if you got this message, something is missing, then simply type in here missing and you see that you will get these options and then you select missing footage. And then After Effects will provide a list of all the missing elements in your project. And probably you will have something like light leak and watercolor elements, just the pre-rendered elements. Don't worry, they are not missing. After Effects just cannot find them. To relink these files, you just select one of these files in your list. I will just show you this as an example with these light leaks here and just right click and then choose replace footage and replace with file. And then you move to the folder wherever you unzipped your Romantic Parallax slideshow folder. And inside this folder, you can find the footage folder. And inside this, there is an assets folder. And inside this, you can find all the included pre-rendered elements. You have the light leaks here. You have the symbols. This, this is a Illustrator file. And you have this watercolor element movie files. So in my case, I want to relink the light leak. So I come to these light leaks here and Normally it is enough to just relink one of them. So just light leak number one, light leak number one, select this and then choose import. And After Effects would, should be able to find the other files. If not, then you have to do it for each file. But normally this works really good. Okay, so now we can start with the customization. The customization for this project is actually really easy. You see that we have two compositions already open. We have the audio composition. Here you can put in your audio file and we have the render composition. Inside the render composition, you can see the whole project. You can see all the scenes and you see that each of these scenes has an encoding transition mat. If you want to add footage to our slideshow, simply select the scene that you want to edit. In my case, I will use, let's say, scene number two. And to add footage to scene number two, we have to find the footage placeholder with the number two. Therefore, you move to the project window again and you see that we have footage placeholders. There is a folder right here, so open this up. And here you find all the footage placeholders for this slideshow. Now I'm dealing with footage number two, so I will open up footage number two by double clicking. And you see we have two placeholder layers in here. I want to replace them with a photo. So I go to File and I choose Import and then Import File. Then I navigate to my photos. And in this case, I will just take this stock photo here, maybe this one here, click Import. And now I will drag it on top of my placeholders. Let's zoom out a bit. It's a little bit too big, so I will scale it down. Like so. Okay. And now I can move back to my scene composition. 
You can navigate to your scene composition by using this mini flow chart here. So simply click this and then move one step to the left. And then you see we have scene number two here. So you can navigate to the scene with the mini flow chart. You can also just come to the render composition and then simply select scene number two, double click on this file. This will also bring you into scene number two into our composition. And you see that After Effects already imported our photo and you see that already something is happening here. We have a light leak and you see that we already have this nice parallax 3D motion here. So now we can change a few things. First of all, we can of course change our title. To edit the title, simply select the title to composition. You can do this right inside your scene. You can also access all the title compositions inside this folder here. It's called title placeholders. If you open this up, you see that all the title placeholders, so there is one placeholder for each scene are lined up here. So you can select title number two and you can double click to enter this either here or just right inside the composition. Double click to enter our title composition. I will just deactivate the transparency grid to make it a little bit more visible. And now you can, of course, change your title. Uh, by the way, if you want to use the same font as I did, there is a link to this font. You can download it for free. It's called, let me take a quick look here. It's called, yeah, Celica Estrella's Handwriting. And the link is inside your project folder. There is a folder called links and there you can find a link to the font and also a link to the music that I used for the preview video. Install the font before you open up the After Effects project. Um, I should have mentioned this before, but if you want to use the same font, then install it on your system and then launch the After Effects project. You can, of course, also use any font that you like. Okay, so to edit the title, simply select the text layer on top uh, inside this composition and double click. And now you can enter your title. Okay, now I can reposition this like so, and then we can move back to scene number two and you see our title is updated. Now we can of course change the color of these watercolor elements. So to do that, you select the color setup layer. Each scene has a color setup layer on top and then inside your effect controls panel, there are all these color symbols or all these color controls available. The first one is the title color. So this is the color of the text. And let's say we want to take over color from the picture here, this white here. The second one are the symbols color. The symbols are now, are these small elements. You can see them right here. They're looking like particles floating around. I will just take another color to make them a little bit more obvious. Maybe something like a nice bluish color here. And now you can see them a little bit better floating around here in our scene. Now let's change the color of our backdrop of our title backdrop here so the watercolor elements and the first one maybe nice something like that second one let's say we take over this blue here and the third one maybe similar color something like that a little bit brighter and now yeah i think that looks pretty good now what you can do is you can change the light leak you see if i scroll through this composition you see that there is there are some light leaks going on and you can choose a light leak for each of the scenes so simply select the light leak scene 2 composition and double click to enter it and you see we have nine different light leak layers and you also see that only one of them is active right now so to choose another light leak you can simply deactivate this one and maybe let's say use light leak number two you can take a look how this looks like um, this is actually a pretty cool one. So let's select this and let's move back to scene number two. Let's see what this does. Now you see that it updates and now we have this light leak uh, being laid over our image. If you want to change the strength of your light leak, simply select the light leak layer, press T on your keyboard to reveal the opacity and then you can either intensify it to set it to 100, then the light leak is pretty strong. If you want it to be more subtle, then set it to something like 50. The standard value for most of the light leaks is 70. So you can change the intensity of the light leak. If you do not want any light leak, then just turn off this layer. The next option that you have is to change the position of your title. So if you want your title to be somewhere else in your image, it's very easy to do. Select the layer and 
one little hint if you want to change the position make sure that this setting here is active the world axis mode the standard setting is the local axis mode then your axes are following exactly your your object in this case this layer but i would recommend to use the world axis mode because then the axes are just following our our world space here and this prevents that we shift our title uh, on the set axis or on on some axis we do not want to move it so change it to world axis mode and then just shift it on the x and on the y axis in my case let's say i want to put my title up here so i will just take the x axis drag it over like so and now i will move it up on the y axis okay and you see that it is also rotated this direction so i will come in here press r and change the y rotation from minus 15 to plus 15 to rotate it in the other direction something like that and this looks pretty cool and the cool thing is if you use the world axis and if i press p now you see that our C axis didn't change and this is important because otherwise you could get some problems with the focal point of our camera. And this is basically it for this customization. So if you take a look at our render composition, uh, each scene is exactly the same. So if we enter scene number 10, for example, you see we have exactly the same layers, color setup, light leaks, title and symbols and so on. So if you do not want to have any symbols, I didn't mention this, you can of course also turn off this layer, then you see that these small particles disappear. And yeah, so customization is exactly the same for all of these layers. One more hint, if you want to erase some of the scenes, for example, if you do not want to use, let's see, 18 scenes I think I have got here yes 18 scenes maybe you do not have 18 uh, images or you want to use less then you can delete scenes but be aware that you always have to delete four scenes so you cannot just delete the last scene here because then the transitions will not work anymore uh, you always have to delete four scenes because these transitions are forming like more or less a cycle and you see that I colored these scenes always four of them in the same color and this means if you want to delete scenes so if you do not want to use all of the scenes then always you have to delete always four of them so for example you want to use you want to make a slideshow that is uh, yeah, about one minute long then you can delete these four scenes with the transition mats of course so select all of these layers and then delete them make sure that you do not delete the end composition and make sure that you never delete the scene number one because these are a little bit different and what you have to do then is you simply select these two layers here, so the end scene and the transition mat, drag them over, hold down shift, and it should snap in place right at this marker here. And if it snaps in place right at this marker, let's check that, like so, then the transition will work. So for example, if you want to make an even shorter or something like an intro or whatever, then you could also delete these scenes here. So just select them, delete them, and then move this over, hold down shift and snap them right at this point here. So this is how you can delete scenes. And make sure if you change the duration of the slideshow that you select the last scene, press O on your keyboard to move your cursor to the out point and then press N on your keyboard to bring in your work area. Otherwise you will render out these black or these empty frames here. Okay, now I changed the duration of my slideshow to about, let's see, 55 seconds. So now we have a very short slideshow with only 10 placeholders. If you want to use more placeholders, then of course you can open up, I don't want to save this for now. You can open up the longer version. So let's take a look at that quickly. And you see that in this version, we have a bunch of scenes we have 26 scenes and the animation or the slideshow is nearly 2 minutes and 15 or even longer 2 minutes and 18 long and here you have of course also the possibility to delete some scenes if you do not want to use that many photos in your slideshow.
Okay, so this is it for this customization tutorial. I really hope that you like this template. If you have any questions, then feel free to write me a message either through my VideoHive profile or also through my website, which is www.graphicinmotion.com. There you can find a contact form. You can also find my email address there. So if you have any questions, then feel free to write me. I thank you very much for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.